How many times, as an ME-CFS patient, have you gone to your doctor, they've run a full range of tests, and then they turn around and say, we found nothing wrong, you're absolutely fine, maybe you're just a bit stressed, or, you know, perhaps it's all in your head. But recent research has been uncovering more and more biomedical problems within ME-CFS and the closely related long COVID. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you what is arguably the most dramatic evidence, something that if you were to actually show it to your doctor, they simply could no longer say that this illness was all in your head. My name is Patrick Usher. I'm an ME-CFS patient and author of the book Understanding ME-CFS and Strategies for Healing. And the research we're talking about today comes from the Netherlands, and in particular from the trailblazing group of Rob Vust. Now, one of his PhD students, Anouk Slaghecha, was actually looking at tissues from ME-CFS patients using an electron microscope. And she called Rob over and said, what I'm seeing here I've never seen anything like this. And he agreed, and actually his whole lab are very excited about these results because for them, they show the most clear-cut evidence of the difference between ME-CFS and someone who is still healthy. So let's cut straight to the chase. We're talking about something going wrong in the capillaries. Now, the capillaries are the smallest uh, blood vessels in the body, but they are a network which run all through it and essentially supply oxygen to pretty much every tissue. And so if there was something going wrong in the capillaries in particular, for example, in the supply of blood into the muscles, then you could have a really obvious reason for why someone might experience exercise intolerance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight into the research and I'm going to show you, first of all, healthy capillary, and then we're going to cut to what a capillary can look like in ME-CFS. And I don't think you'll need a degree in microbiology in order to spot the difference. So this, first of all, is what a healthy capillary looks like. You have the basement membrane, which is the outermost layer, uh, which is kind of the protective layer of the capillary and which kind of gives it its integrity. You have the endothelial cell, which is the next layer within, which allows for the transfer of the, um, uh, the red blood cell into the tissues surrounding. Then you have the lumen, which is the kind of um, space or the, the empty space within the capillary, which is actually what allows the red blood cell to flow through the capillary, because if there were no lumen, well, there'd be no space to actually move. And finally, you have the red blood cell itself, which is, of course, what carries the oxygen. OK, so hold that in your mind and now consider what it can look like in ME-CFS. I told you that the difference wouldn't be hard to spot. So what you have here is clearly something of a physiological disaster. The basement membrane has actually become much thicker. You can see at the top uh, in this example that the basement membrane is really reaching out and also in the bottom right as well, there has been significant thickening. The endothelial cell as well has thickened. You can see that it too is much larger. And what the research group actually noted is that in relation to the lumen or that space through which the red blood cell, you know, can kind of can, can pass, in a lot of capillaries, the lumen has significantly reduced in size, making it harder for the red blood cell to actually, you know, find kind of passage through the capillary. Uh, and in some cases, including, I think, in, in this image, there is in fact no lumen at all. So the red blood cell is pretty much stuck. This is just a quick 15 second interruption to say that this video is sponsored by Turney. Have you been using ChatGBT in order to try and understand your chronic illness better? If so, you need to check out Turney, which in my view does it so much better. It's an artificial intelligence platform specifically designed for ME-CFS and long COVID patients. Check out the links in the description box below. So I think we can see why this research group regards this as such a striking example of the difference between what's going on in the ME-CFS body versus what's actually happening in someone who is still well. But why is this all happening? What the research group has identified is that it is in fact thanks to an excessive deposition of collagen in the basement membrane of the capillary. Now the basement membrane is normally made up of collagen. It is after all a protective matrix, a protective structure. But there's something going on in ME-CFS which is actually causing an excessive accumulation of collagen in the basement membrane. What you can see right now in the results on the right is in fact their measurement 
of the size of the basement membrane in the MECFS and long COVID groups versus healthy controls. And you can see that it is significantly bigger on average. Conversely, you can also see that the lumen has reduced in size. And finally, in this microscopic image, you can see some blood vessels from a distance and the actual thickening that is visible under the microscope in the MECFS and long COVID group. So what are the implications of all of this if you have MECFS? What will the effect of this problem be? Well, basically, because the uh, basement membrane has become thicker, because the capillaries have become more rigid, it's much harder for that red blood cell and the oxygen that it carries to actually diffuse out of the cell and into the muscle tissues. Because it's not just a question of whether or not the blood reaches the muscles, but it's also a question of whether or not it can actually diffuse successfully into them. And because of this thickening, that process of diffusion is actually impeded. This is what was found by the research group who went on to actually measure the oxygen uptake into the tissues of the MECFS and long COVID patients, and this is what they found. But when you look at this graph at first glance, you might think that actually the long COVID and MECFS patients are doing better. In this case, actually, the higher you appear on the graph, the worse the oxygen uptake. And so you can see that um, while the control group is somewhere around 1.15, 1.2, the long COVID group is somewhere around 0.9, and the MECFS group is somewhere around 0.7. Five, indicating that the actual um, uptake of oxygen into the muscles is impaired. And actually, I should say that this gets worse because what this group also found is that there are less capillaries in MECFS and long COVID than in a healthy person. So not only is there this reduced supply of oxygen to the tissues, but there are in fact less capillaries even to begin with. So where does all this leave us? Well, for one, we don't actually know why this is all happening, we just know that it is happening. But most likely it is some kind of response to um, the inflammatory nature of the illness or to the other mechanisms that are ongoing in which somehow the body kind of compensates or adapts by creating this dysfunction, which only further worsens the problem. So that in and of itself is a question for future research, as is whether this is a problem which only occurs in the muscle capillaries or whether it is in fact also occurring elsewhere in the body? Might it be happening in the blood vessels going into the brain? Might it be happening in other organs? We know that this is not a new phenomenon. It does happen in other diseases, for example, in kidney or lung disease. So could it actually be the case that this is happening more globally in the whole body of the MECFS patient, thereby further reducing blood perfusion and tissue oxygenation? As I say, these are open questions. But for now, what we can conclude is that this is yet another example of how there is reduced blood perfusion and tissue oxygenation in the body. As we know from previous research, MECFS patients have low blood volume, they, have, they can have autoantibodies that are affecting blood flow, they can have microclots which make the blood thick, um, they can have problems with red blood cell deformability, where the red blood cell is actually in and of itself, stiff and unable to adapt to the microcirculatory zones. And of course, things then at a cellular level, like reactive oxygen species, which also further impede blood flow. And so this is yet another striking example of this kind of problem, one which, when you take them all together, give us a very clear biomedical basis for why someone has an illness of exercise intolerance, and then, of course, the subsequent post-exertional malaise. So that's it for this video. Please check out the links in the description box below for more on my book or for information on my treatment and research support community. I look forward to your comments. What do you think of this research? Please leave your thoughts down below and I will see you in the next video.